everyone, what's up? This is Simon, back with a tutorial on building a little chat user interface for your Ionic 4 application. So to correct one thing up front, we're not building a real chat in here. So for real chat, you need a backend like you could use Firebase or Node.js backend, whatever. But this would actually bring this video to, I guess, a few hours and we will only focus on building this little chat view for our application and also having an elastic text area input for the messages. So let's do this. I've already started a blank new Ionic application and also installed the ngx auto size package. So actually I can bring this in real quickly. Um, that's a nice directive to use for our um, text areas. As you can see, you simply apply it to the text area and that's all you got to do. Uh, you can actually subscribe. No, you can not really, but just a few options in here. Um, there are also other ways to do this, but I just found this package um, real easy to use and it worked immediately. So let's do this and add the auto size module and let's also Let's also install the Ionic Lab because, um, I don't know, it should, looks better on a device and Lab gives us a nice preview. And with Ionic 4, we need to install the Ionic Lab up front. So if you're new to Ionic, um, maybe this is also new. So yay, you learn another thing in this video. Okay, once you've installed this, you can simply run Ionic Lab. And I did five things at once. So every beginner is already lost, sorry. What you need to do after you started the application and install the package is go to the module file of your lazy loaded page. Um, that means in our case, we started with a blank app. So it's the home uh, module right in here. Otherwise, um, you would have other pages, so not the app module. So sometimes we add things to the app module, but for some packages, we need to add them to the specific module of the page. So here we go, app module, auto size module, and there we go. So once you're done with this part, we can continue, let's say with the home page. So I'll bring in a few messages and not mess up with our page, um, just like this, you know. Um, just so the view isn't that empty. In your case, your backend will of course give you different data, so you have to work with the fields, but most likely we'll have something like created at a message. User might also be user ID in your case, for example, so it's very likely not just the plain name of a user, but it will work in our case and uh, you will see um, how to do it in a sec. So then we're gonna need a send message function. Um, maybe we could also add a constructor, but actually I think we don't need this. Uh, so we could leave it out, but let's just keep it for now. So what you want to do with the chat is of course, having the bubbles on either the one side for incoming messages or on the other side for your own messages. So therefore let's continue with the homepage. Um, so I recently learned I should uh, try a bit different. So first of all, bring up the problem and later write the code for it. So that's what I will try to do starting with this video. So therefore let's implement the view based on the messages and then later try to add messages and then write the styling to make the chat look good. So first of all, we, oh, that's an interesting component. Uh, we start with the ion grid and with ion rows, so ng4 let message of messages. So this will give us uh, some rows for the messages. Actually, we got some already, which is pretty cool. So let's go ahead with a little ion column. Let's just for now, just for the sake of showing what's wrong. Um, I can barely do this really. It's hard to me if I see the code that I created up front and now I do something else that really hurts hurts me yeah anyhow um i will do it just for you you're the biggest asset i got okay that sounds pretty strange but anyway um we're gonna start every text message has a user and also of course the message itself so message dot message okay and Actually, let's take a look at it. So we will do this really slow in this case, and I don't like Android, so we will just use iOS. Okay, now it's out. Um, 
guess I will now lose a few subscribers, but... So, that's what we got, okay? Three messages, doesn't really look like a chat at all. And we don't need this one because you know what to do. Also, what we want to display is the time. So, um, I will already add a little class to this time. I hope that's okay for you. So, in this case, let's have the time on the right. I think that's the same for iMessage and um, WhatsApp as well. So in that case, message created add, and then uh, we can use the Angular date pipe, and I think the short date should be what we need to display in this message. Uh, hopefully, I think that contains the time. Yeah. So now we got the messages uh, with the time. Uh, maybe we should add a little break after the user message as well. So now we got the basic um, text message object, I would say. So now we need to distinguish between which user has sent the message. So therefore, you should keep a reference of the current uh, user. And let's say the current user is Simon. So in your case, you get the information. You should have a provider or a service now holding the information, which user is logged in. And then you can easily see if your current user has sent the message or if it is a different user. So then you can go ahead with an ng if um, current user is not the message dot user. So in that case, um, we will use size. Um, actually, that was pretty wrong what I typed in here. That was the old way. I've written some Ionic 3 code lately, so sorry about that. Um, so in that case, we want to use size nine, so it will be to the left side of the view. And then we can simply copy this, or you could create your own component if you would like to. If the message is equal to the user, in that case, we will still use um, nine, but now we will also use offset three. So that means all the messages from Simon are now a bit to the right, hopefully. And every message from Max is only up until here. Okay, that looks already a bit more like a chat, I think. But what we need now as well is um, some more styling. So let's add class and this is, let's have a general class for the message and then other message. Okay, not the perfect name, but I think you know what I mean. You know, it's from another user and that is my message. So now we got a few CSS classes that we eventually want or can or should implement, which is message, um, other message. Uh, thanks for that. Uh, and then we got, I think, my message. And finally, we also got time, I think. Okay, so um, also I will just now bring in a bit of code. So for a general message, what we need is a bit of padding, border radius, uh, and stuff like this also to um, show the line breaks that we might have added to the messages. So that's not really making a big difference in the UI, just adding some padding and margin here and there. But what brings in the cool thing is adding a background color now. And here we can make use, if we want to, of the uh, CSS color, so ion color, Let's use this one in here just to sometimes use a bit different things and let's use a white color for the text and in here perhaps the secondary color with a white text as well. And for the time, let's use uh, also a little color. I think we don't actually need the float as we are already floating pretty right. But now everything turns into something that already looks a bit more like chat bubbles, right? Okay, we got the text, we got the time, uh, everything is in place so far. So what we can do next is um, add some messages to our chat. And we will use the um, ion footer. Is this actually footer or footer? Uh, I always run into these problems. Uh, as I'm not a native speaker, I'm sorry about saying things wrong. But actually, I'm pretty sure you see what's going on and you understand that this is a toolbar, not a toolar. Come on. Okay, early Monday morning, great. Anyhow, 
Uh, let's give this a light color. A light color, a light color. Just relax, Simon. All right, um, inside the toolbar, we can um, create the interface that we need or that you know from iMessage, WhatsApp, whatever. Again, using a little ion row and then ion call, let's say size 10 for the input. And then if you use the ion column with a size of two at the end, uh, we can position the send button to the end. I don't know if you see it like this or like that. Um, but you will see it on a screen very soon, very soon. So simply go ahead with a regular text area and then give it the auto size directive. That's what we installed up front. And this helps to um, increase the size of the text box. Um, actually, maybe you might want to use something like uh, maximum rows for the text area. Um, I don't know if we can use it like this. Let's see, I think there's also a limit for iMessage uh, rows that you can have. Um, so why not like this? And then connect it with an ng model to let's say new message. And perhaps we should have an empty new message in the beginning right here. And then uh, we can close this text area array and also give it a little class message input because this will very likely not look like it should. And in here, we will go ahead with a little ion button. So this will take up all the space in the clear button. And this will also be disabled if we don't have any message to send. But then in the end, we will call send message. And this will also get the class message button. So let's go ahead with message button and then we also got the message input. And that's it for now. So going back, we should now have this little footer area in which we got the input, in which we can type and in which we see it actually gets bigger, but a maximum of, uh, I wouldn't say this is three rows, but it's okay for now. Um, but you see, using the default stuff, um, very unlikely is enough in the beginning. So you always need to add some kind of styling. So for example, the button is not aligned. In that case, you go ahead with um, align items center and perhaps we can also remove the padding a bit in here. So now the button should be aligned at the center of the row all the time, even if the size increases. So we see it's in the middle. Looking good so far. Actually, let's try something else and see if this still works. And for the message input, um, or for the message button, first of all, you see it is, why is this text field so small and why can I resize it? Um, why is it so small? Ion column size 10, a size of 10 is pretty big. Um, I think we need to add a width of 100% and let me bring in a few other things as well. So maybe we want to have a little, um, come on, a little border radius um, in the background. And then what's also important is to recall resize none in here. Otherwise you get this and you don't want this, of course. So now it is styled a bit more and immediately the view looks a lot more legit like a real chat, okay? Perhaps not 100%, maybe you wanna remove this uh, strange blue color effect. But now you see that there's um, a bit more space right now. Uh, the button is still right here, but the button is a bit small. So if you wanna make this one bigger, the easiest way is to simply use the debugging tools that God gave to you, uh, where God is uh, the Ionic team, and then look for, uh, let's say, what do they use right here? Padding at the start one and at the end one as well. So if you remove this or change this, it will look a bit different. So let's simply override both of these CSS variables. So copy them in or let's use 0 0.5, which should already be enough in our case. And there we go. Save all of this. And let's see how everything looks now. So now we got a little bigger button and I think that looks a lot better. 
final piece is now to call the send message functionality, which we haven't implemented yet, right? So in our case, I will just push a new message message to um, the array of messages that we got. Normally, you would make the HTTP request or add something to Firebase. So we got a great course on this inside the Ionic Academy. You should definitely check it out. If you're not yet a member, of course, you can become a member at any time. Um, and then you will learn many more things besides building a chat. So let's fake all of the objects that we need. New date, get time. Uh, and finally, the message, which is this dot new message. Okay, um, of course, this is not really good chat behavior um, as we only see our own new messages. We only got one from another user, but that's fine in this example for us. And what's also cool right now is, okay, I will show you the problem before I write the code uh, I have learned. So uh, let's say we got a lot of things in here. So you write something and now you write even more. And the problem is the message is at the bottom of the view. So you add something, it is definitely added, but it is not visible. So therefore we want to scroll the view to the visible area and we can use the ion content view child for this. So go ahead and import ion content. Actually, they changed the name um, just before the version four release. So I think previously it was, I don't know what it was. It was different, but now it is ion content. So all the things and the components in your view are now like this. So let's call this content of the type ion content. No, maybe it was ionic before. Maybe I'm not completely sure. So then you can use the ion content. You will see you get all the events and functions from the ion content. And now we can say, uh, what can we say? scroll to bottom and we can do this with a duration so let's do this a bit slower and then we got to refresh the view i will just copy this because it's so hard to type random characters of course um, and now we see that it's not really working because it is added and scrolled basically at the same time so the view is not yet really resized so in that case a um, bit ugly solution, but you can use this is to use a little timeout. Actually, I think you don't even need to um, pass in any value because the view should be redrawn at that point. Um, maybe there might be a slight problem um, if you use some files that then need to be displayed first. But as you can see right now, we're typing something and were brought to the bottom of the list immediately afterwards. It looks pretty smooth, just like you expect from any chat application. And that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. As I said, we're not building a backend, but only this small front end part is important as well and can be tricky. Um, you've seen how to add some cool CSS and our CSS variables to the view. Uh, plus the auto size package for the elastic text area. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to this channel for more Ionic content and also check out the Ionic Academy, which is my own school to help you learn Ionic as fast as possible. So I will catch you in the next video. Build something great with a code. Let me know below in the comments if you enjoyed this a bit different style of video and then I'll catch you next time.